over. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. He also used to be captain of the HMS Victory, finest battleship in Her Majesty's fleet. His name was Newcomb, and he jolly well did like being captain. He wore his full dress uniform all the time and marched about the bridge barking orders at the crew. On the tour directly off to mine, the Victory took on a very special observer, a certain Admiral Sir Horatio Big Bum, there to make an official year-end evaluation. As opposed to Captain Newcomb, Sir Horatio was a true naval hero, and in time past, used to be Newcomb's commander. When Sir Horatio came on board, Newcomb puffed his chest out so far he popped three brass buttons. But Sir Horatio snorted the battleships were sort of outdated and belonged in a dustbin. I should rather be on a proper aircraft carrier like my own flagship, the Royal George V. Captain Newcomb did his best to impress the old bird, showing off how up-to-date and modern his ship was and putting his crew through their paces. But it was no use. Whatever Newcomb did made him look like a bloody idiot. For example, when a gun turret spun about wildly, you can push the Admiral out of harm's way. And into a bucket of swab water. Sir Horatio remarked that he could see why Newcomb was merely in command of an old tin of beans. <laughs> uh, that really hurt. Newcomb was quite depressed. But then his first officer happened to remark that they were on pace for a record transatlantic crossing. They just might drop anchor in Halifax Harbor in record time. Hmm, that was enough for Newcomb. A new speed record would definitely impress an old Navy fogey like Sir Horatio. Newcomb ordered full speed ahead. As the ship bounced over the waves, some of the crew members got a bit wheezy and put their ditty bags to good use. Still, Newcomb was determined to have his speed record. Eight bells, the fog was as thick as pea soup, but Captain Newcomb refused to slow down. He was depending on his radar to pick up any other ship that might be in his way. And great heavens, the radar man did pick up a blip straight dead ahead. A blip looked as though it was stationary, but it was right in Newcomb's path. If he changed course to go round it, he would lose his speed record. So he ordered his radio man to send a message. Increase your speed and alter course by two degrees. Several minutes later, there was a message in reply telling Newcomb to change his course by two degrees. <laughs> well, nobody ever refused one of his orders before. So he sent his original message again. Change your course by two degrees. And again, the answer came back telling Newcomb to change his course by two degrees. Well, now Newcomb was quite upset. If somebody did not change course immediately, they were going to collide. And then Newcomb had an idea. He grabbed the radio, flicked the voice switch, and began to shout, I strongly suggest you alter course two degrees or risk being rammed. This is Admiral Sir Horatio Big Bum. And Newcomb was certain that pulling rank, so to speak, would get results. And he was quite pleased with himself, until he turned around to see Sir Horatio standing directly behind him. <laughs> the old boy was about to pop a blood vessel. But before Newcomb could think of anything to say, the radio crackled. Ahoy there, Admiral, said a voice. Mm -hmm. I still strongly suggest that you change your course by two degrees. This is the Lighthouse Keeper. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, an ex-friend, ex-captain. With proper instruction, Seaman Second Class Newcomb can become the best swabby in the entire Navy.